Being able to input data quickly into a spreadsheet is going to be one of the most useful things you can learn when working in Excel. And in Excel, we have a couple of different features that are really going to quicken up this process. So we're going to explore both of those in this lesson. And we're going to start out by talking about autofill or fill down as it's most commonly known. Now we've already seen in earlier lessons that Excel contains inbuilt custom lists to help you input common data quickly. If we just refresh ourselves on that, you can see here in cell A3, I have the column heading months. If I wanted to fill down the months of the year, I can either type in Jan or the longer January and simply use the little fill handle in the bottom corner. That's this little green square that you can see, drag down and you can see it's automatically going to fill those months in for me because this is a built in custom list in Excel. The same applies to days. So I can either type in Mun or Monday I'm going to press Control Enter to stay in the same cell, and then I can use my autofill handle to fill down the days of the week. Now, those are the only two inbuilt lists that you have in Excel. If you want to utilize this method for other things, such as dates or maybe sequences of numbers, then you need to get familiar with the fill down option. Now, let's add another column of data, and we're going to call this one dates. And I'm going to type in, let's just go for the first of the first 2023. Control enter to stay in the same cell. Now, if I just want to have a sequential list of dates, then I can simply grab the autofill handle and I can drag it down. And you can see by default, it just puts these in sequential order. So we have January the 1st, January the 2nd, January the 3rd, so on and so forth. But we do have some other options. Let's control Z and drag down again, because notice off to the right, we have a little autofill tag. So when we click on this, it's going to show us more autofill options. So I now get a menu where I can choose exactly what I'm interested in filling. So currently I just have sequential dates, but maybe I'm only interested in showing dates that are weekdays. So effectively, I want my list of dates to exclude the weekends. So if I go down to the fill weekdays option, watch the data very closely. Did you see that some of those numbers changed because we're now excluding weekends? So I know that the 1st of January is actually a Sunday. So then we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then it skips over Saturday and Sunday. And then we start back again on Monday the 9th. Let's control Z to undo. Now, what if I had a background fill color applied to this cell? So let's just select turquoise accent four. When I now drag down and click on my autofill options, I can choose if I want to fill formatting only or fill without formatting. So if I choose fill formatting only, you can see what that does. It carries across the formatting, but not the value. If I select this again and choose fill without formatting, it's going to do the opposite. So it's going to fill sequential dates down, but it's not going to carry across that formatting. So we have a couple of different options in there. That autofill menu can be really useful. Now, what about if we need to fill down numbers in our spreadsheet? Well, we could go one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And if we just have a few numbers to fill out, that might be okay. But what about if I want to fill down numbers for a thousand rows or 10,000 rows? That's going to be really tedious. Now, the other way we could do this is we could type in the first two numbers, select both of these and use the autofill handle to drag down. But if I've got 10,000 rows to fill in, I'm going to be dragging down and down and down for a long time. So let's take a look at a better way of doing this. Control Z to undo. What we can do instead is we can type in number one. I'm going to press Control Enter to stay in the same cell. And let's say that I want to fill down a number for every day of the year. So down to 365. What we can do is make sure we have the first cell selected, go to the home tab, and in the editing group, we have a fill down button and we want to select series. And this is going to open up the fill series dialog box. 
So the first thing we need to specify here is if we're filling across the row or down the column. So we're filling down the column. We then get to choose our type. Now, if it's just numbers that we're filling down, we just want to make sure we have linear selected in here. We can then determine the step value. So by how many numbers do we want it to go up each time? Now, if we're just doing a sequential list, one, two, three, four, the step value is just one. And then we can add in the stop value. So for me, that's going to be 365, but you could have 10,000, 100,000, 200,000 in here. And then when we click on OK, you can see it automatically inputs all of those numbers so quickly. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. So we've saved ourselves a lot of hard work. Now it's also worth noting if we type one in again into this cell, if we wanted to fill these across, so running horizontally, again, if we go to fill down and go into series, this is where we would choose the rows option just here. Again, we're gonna do linear and I'm just gonna do five, click on okay, and it's gonna fill those numbers across. So don't forget about those little fill down options that you have in here. So now that we understand how to use autofill, let's move on to probably one of my favorite things in Excel, and that is flash fill. Now, flash fill is often referred to as the superhero utility in Excel because it is so useful and so time saving in many different situations. And I just have three very small data sets just to demonstrate this to you. Now, notice here in the first cell table, we have a list of first names and a list of last names. Now, maybe my boss has asked me to combine the first name and the last name into one column just to save a bit of space in the spreadsheet. So I basically want a full name column here where we have the full name combined into one column. Now, doing this manually, particularly if you have a lot of names to fill in, is going to be time consuming. So we can use Flash Fill to help us out with this. Now, the way that Flash Fill works is it recognizes patterns. So we need to provide the first pattern that we're looking for. And that basically means just typing out the first record as we want it to look. So I'm going to type in Brian Gosling. I'm going to press Control Enter to stay in the same cell. And then there are a few different ways that we can invoke flash fill. By far the easiest is simply to use the keyboard shortcut control E and check it out. It recognizes the pattern and it applies it to every record in our data set. How quick was that? We can then, if we wanted to delete out columns B and C and we have everything combined into column D. Let's do it again, but in a slightly different way. In this second table here, I have a list of products and if they are in stock or out of stock. And you'll see this quite often. You might be sent a data set where numerous different pieces of information have been combined into one cell. And in an ideal world, we always want to make sure we just have one piece of data in a column. So I want to break this up so that we have the products listed in this column just here and whether they're in stock, out of stock or pending in this column just here. So we effectively need to split this data up. Now, again, we can use flash fill to do this. So we're going to give it our pattern. So the first product here is alarm clock. And is that in stock? Yes, it is. We're going to type in in stock and then we can use flash fill. Now I could simply press control E on both of these columns or alternatively, I could go up to the data tab and in the data tools group, here is the flash fill button. If I click this, it's going to copy it down. I can click in the next column, click flash fill again, and it's going to copy that information down. How simple is that? Now there is a third way that we can do this. So in the final table at the bottom here, you can see I have some SKUs and this SKU is made up of a catalog number at the beginning. We then have a country code and then we have a part number and I want to separate out the country code and the part number from this SKU. So once again, I could type in the first one. So GBR in this case. And another way of invoking flash fill is to simply click in the cell below and just start to type the second one. 
As soon as we do that, Excel recognizes the pattern and can you see it's ghosted the rest of those down. So if that is correct, I can simply hit enter and it's going to flash fill down. So simple. And then finally, the part number, we're going to type in 222, control enter to stay in the same cell. And this time I'm just going to use control E to copy those down. Now, flash fill is brilliant. It does have a couple of drawbacks. One of them being that you can't have any blank columns in the middle of your data. So if I show you what I mean here, I'm just going to delete out this information up here and we'll add in a blank column, control shift plus to put that in. Now, if I have this blank column in here and I try to do a flash fill, so let's type in alarm clock, control enter, control E, it's not going to work because it needs to have the data right next to it. If I delete out this column and then try and do control E, it's back to working. So just be aware of that. There are some disadvantages when it comes to flash fill where you might need to consider other methods such as text to columns or maybe using a formula to split up your data. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.